My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled Building the Online Digital Oil & Gas Awareness Course. I've recently put the finishing touches on an online training course about digital oil and gas. Here's what it took to get the job done. First on the problem. The idea that digital innovations can create value in oil and gas is no longer a topic of dispute. It's taken a few years of hammering away on the idea and the advocacy of some of the louder voices in the industry, including Zero Week and the IEA, for example. But I think we're now over the hump. My conversations in the industry now focus less on the why and more on the where and how. In that regard, my consistent advice for the past two years has not strayed from what I see as how to get moving with digital innovation, and that is the need to educate the organization on digital change. As I see it, companies working in oil and gas, including services companies, need to close the gap between the reality of digital today and their current understanding of digital. The gap is vast, and because of the pace of change, the gap is widening. Employees need to know where to focus and how to move forward to make progress. And not just for the digital innovation team. Digital is a team sport, driven as it is by Metcalfe's Law of Network Value, a network of like-minded people. Team sports work if the team shares a common understanding of the rules. It's about data. The goal, a digital future. The game plan, the digital roadmap. The tactics, agile and design thinking. The skills needed including domain expertise, change management, data science and innovation, and finally, the positions to be played, business modeler, bot wrangler, AI analyst, blockchain coder, and cloud specialist. There's lots of ways to get educated on digital. It's a big industry, after all, and there are plenty of publications, websites, videos, TV shows, podcasts, and courses on digital topics. I might even argue that there's too much digital education out there, and it's a problem picking out the gems from the dross. But there are far fewer ways to get educated on how digital will impact oil and gas. I am unaware of any university courses yet on the topic. You could take in a year's worth of narrow conferences on the use of AI in oil and gas, or blockchain, or cloud, costing you thousands in registration fees and travel dollars, and still not get exposed to the digital basics, or how to piece it all together. I speak at many of these events, I should know. So how do you cost-effectively equip your people with a common base of understanding of digital? Sending everyone to conferences could work, but it's very costly, at $1,500 per day, just for conference fees, and lacking in focus and consistency. Running my in-classroom experience can be very effective, but it's also costly, at $750 per day per student. And when the numbers get large, it's tough for teams working remote sites or in 24-7 roles to take advantage of it. You can even get digital awareness training for free by outsourcing it randomly to tech companies or consultants. But then, your digital agenda will be defined by specific vendors, which can have unattended consequences. So, is there an alternative? What's needed is digital awareness training, independently developed and produced, that is consumable by people on their terms, on any device, whenever and wherever it's convenient, in bite-sized chunks, in a way that matches their role and interest, lighter in some areas, deeper in others, anywhere in the world, and at a cost that is a fraction of the in-person option. Well, this sounds like a problem for digital to solve. So, for the past two weeks, I've devoted myself to developing a one-day online lecture and quiz course called Digital Oil & Gas, a primer on the impacts of digital innovation in oil and gas. My book, Bits, Bytes, and Barrels, provided the basis for all the content, which dramatically accelerated the delivery of the course. The course addresses a broad range of the oil and gas industry and the nature of digital innovations that are most important. It provides the terminology and key concepts. It digs into topics such as the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and robotics. It sets out some of the more vexing problems of the midstream, upstream, and downstream sectors, and how these digital technologies are already solving those problems, and how the digital solutions are likely to evolve. The course includes key management topics like the nature of digital impacts and timing, risks that must be managed, the role of new methods like agile in driving success, organizing a digital team, the impacts on people, 
and how to set out a roadmap. It takes a lot of work to build an online course of substance. So here's what I did. So first problem was how to distribute the course. I considered running the course on my own website, but then I'd need to build the commercial back end, find a home for the videos, and invent a way to test for understanding. Quizzes, that is. It was far faster to host the course on a third-party platform, and after a bit of research, I selected Udemy for this role. Next, I have to land the visual design. Good quality material has thoughtful landing pages, opening credits, and divider slides. I used my regular branding advisor to build beautiful imagery that reflected my color scheme, images, and website to unify the experience. Next, I had to get some professional filming done. First impressions matter, so I retained a local marketing firm to help create a few minutes of high-quality studio video to promote the course. Then, design the content. In a two-day planning workshop, my team and I laid out the course into 12 sections, including titles, length, order, and key learning concepts. We ran numerous little trials with Udemy to sort out how everything works before we embarked on the big lift, that is, scripting and image build. Using a single shared Google Doc, let my three-person team collaborate without any confusion. Then you have to write the script. My research suggested a script was necessary because you need to consider what concepts you want to teach and in what order. In the end, I wrote 74 separate scripts, each covering a specific topic. Then we had to build the supporting images. Much the way theater works, the author writes the script, but the director decides on costumes, set, lighting, and props. I've had to play both roles and created the PowerPoint imagery for the lectures with the help of my assistant. Then you have to record the video. This is the tricky bit because I live on a water airstrip and noisy flights take off and land all day. So I moved the entire build team to a rented house on a quiet golf course where we could work in peace and with purpose. And to record everything, I used my Mac and a studio quality microphone, and I was able to film three sections per day, ultimately ending with 74 separate lectures. Next, you had to master the video. Raw video needs considerable editing to remove noise, fix mistakes, and segment into lectures. We purchased a home cloud drive that gave us two terabytes of storage on a Wi-Fi network so that we didn't have to use Google or some other cloud service. And then we had to load the course into Udemy. As the sections were mastered, another one of my assistants loaded the course into Udemy, putting the lectures in the right spots, creating the quizzes, and adding the resources. Next, we had to edit the captions. Video services can now create captions automatically from the dialogue on a video, but the captions still need editing. This is slow work, since virtually every caption needs to be lightly edited. And then last but not least, check for quality. Unsurprisingly, there have been some quality issues, and these are getting repaired. Some things are just hard to do right the first time. So in conclusion, now that the course has been built, it could be embedded in a company's own internal training catalog so that it's available in the usual corporate controlled environment and at a lower cost. And the course could be translated to other languages since the captions have been completed. If you're really interested in moving the needle at your company, reach out to me by email or text or however to discuss how this online course could be of value to you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.